But it's just interesting, uh, you know, in terms of anatomy and anatomies <coughs> as systems of classifying yeah. bodies of work and bodies of people. Mm, absolutely. And the mm-hmm. kind of taxonomies. I mean, I was just taken by the kind of labeling that uh, I was so interested in that because our bodies, ourselves, which is supposed to be this great revolutionary, wonderful, progressive moment, actually uses a kind of clinical labeling mm-hmm. which invokes the anatomical atlases of earlier periods, for, you know, which were used for very different ends. So I was also thinking about how one, you know, our explanatory narratives can reposition these objects in mm-hmm. such interesting ways, but that's not intrinsic to them, of right. course. Right. It's very striking about Ice work is the coexistence of kind of a dark humor, you know, mm-hmm. a kind of um, a melancholy sometimes, a, a deep pathos. I mean, there's just all these layers of kind of um, affect, you know, mm-hmm. that are very dense and rich and also very visual. And when you're trying to describe them, which is, you know, with that with the July calendar entry mm-hmm. where you have to sort of say, is it an attack or is it, are they having sex? Is this a mother and son? Is this a couple? Are these, you know, it's yeah. so complicated mm-hmm. that you to try and to establish that, that there are these different kind of layers of signification that are deliberately, I think, deliberately make you think mm-hmm. quite dark thoughts when you're looking at them and then the sense that, or is it that? Um, well, it goes back to a very Freudian understanding, doesn't it, of how mm-hmm. these acts are so easily confused, mm-hmm. particularly in the imagination mm-hmm. of the child. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's something, I think, that's quite interesting that's all, you know, infantile in the best sense mm-hmm. of the word about the way in which the bodies are configured here in the sense that they can slip between these um, fantasies. Yeah. That's really interesting. And it brings me back to Elizabeth's talk and to also a point I was trying to make about that the ambiguity is not just at the level of subject, it's not just at the level of mood, um, but it's also at the level of medium. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just such an interesting hybrid practice that Apple Book has pioneered where so many, you know, the cut of the paint as you mm-hmm. described it, and, the way that the photogenetics scramble uh, sculpture, photography, painting, drawing, all these mm. processes. Mm. I wondered then, Elizabeth, if you would stretch your Zoe Leonard uh, analogy mm-hmm. a little bit further, because yes. I was very intrigued by that and by the juxtaposition there of that black and white photograph and that yes. painting. I who was the painting by? Do you know, the sort of idealized female? <laughs> I have yeah. more if you want to. Um, I, I, no, no. I have a couple. But I mean, that, you, you used that very interestingly mm-hmm. to bring out another, what you described as an alternative trajectory through which to think of the iconography. And of course, we have been quite iconographical in our reading, mm-hmm. yes. although your attempt to bring medium I, in is a yeah. counter to that. But one might want to shift from that axis as well. But we stick with iconography for a minute. Um, can you say a little bit more about how that works for you? Oh, well. To me, it was it was really a questioning. It it was really a way for me to question the the whole notion of display and how, in fact, looking at all these photographs in black and white of Zoe's, where actually I was thinking about you know the whole idea of what is a portrait, mm-hmm. because they all they were all different. So and eventually somebody could come in and say, oh, it's mine. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, anyway, there was something like that. And also, what really also really has been striking me seeing. Ida's exhibition is also the absence of any kind of label. You know, you, you don't say, "Oh, it's my body that day, that hour, that time." It's unlabeled. Mm-hmm. There's something about the unlabeling which is very violent and very forceful. And suddenly, the works becomes also a label in a way, mm-hmm. but an alternative way of labeling things. And I think mm-hmm. indexic, you know, mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. terms of indexicality, I think it's very interesting. So. What really, of course, Zoe Leonard's work is about others. It's mm-hmm. about the others. Mm-hmm. It's about showing the others' mm-hmm. um, vulvas. And Ida was, was about herself. herself. Mm-hmm. But I'm wondering if through that bias of Zoe Leonard, we could ask you know, um, the, relation, the relation of these drawings to the self, you know, what it is made of, and is it really useful? Because they're all, you know, all the drawings are different. So in a mm-hmm. way, mm-hmm. you know, is it, is it a kind of collective? I think, which, you know, yeah. to, to what extent, you know, this incredible solitude that one can find, you know, in looking at your works is a, is a solitude we all partake in. So it's a collective solitude.